Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I am that one guy for never. This is Cabbage Core and I'm showing off my Elden Ring build Saruman the Mad. This is a mad sorcerer build using um, Flame of Frenzy incantations along with regular sorceries. Saruman was a master of all forms of magic so this was definitely uh, a really easy magic build for me to kind of play off of but what I really liked about Saruman was he's depicted in the movies as going mad in fact Gandalf literally uses the line when did Saruman the wise uh when did Saruman the wise um abandon reason for madness so this was this was a really cool fun uh character to play for me so we're gonna jump in here had a little bit of technical issues so please forgive me we're going to um, start this stream over here again. Uh, we were going through Raya Lucaria. We're here in Leonia of the Lakes. Now, this is New Game Plus Plus, so this is going to be uh, my third playthrough through. So enemies do have quite a bit more health, uh, doing quite a bit more damage as well. So let's get going here and show you off the character. Now, as part of the build, guys, we can take a look here at my equipment. I have the Sword of Night and Flame, the Magic Dagger with Glint Blade Phalanx. I have Carrion Regal Scepter, the Golden Order Seal, and Silver Mirror Shield. I personally don't use the shield all too much, but what's really great about this shield is it does have very high magical defense. 89%. That's a lot. And in general, it actually looks really nice on Saruman. So if you're a character, if you're a player that really prefers to shield behind, um, this is going to be a really nice item for you. Now, you don't get this until later in your playthrough. So as I had mentioned in my build video, um, a really good alternative is going to be the kite shield now a lot of people go for the brass shield and that is perfectly fine the reason i like the kite shield was its coloration just kind of looked a little bit nicer on saruman so that's entirely up to you that's just how i personally prefer to play this character as you can see i actually have quite a bit of gear in here this is a bit of my character creator account uh, we go on to the equipment so I have the Queen's Crescent Crown, the Noble's Traveling Garb, the Spellblade's Glove, and the Consort's Trousers. For my Talismans, the Primal Glintstone Blade, Shard of Alexander, Blocks Canvas Talisman, and Graven Mass Talisman. So basically what this is doing is reducing our FP costs, making our weapon skills hit harder, and then making our incantations, and then making our sorceries hit harder. Um, as far as your... As far as your Ash, um, your Spirit Summon, excuse me, um, I was rocking the Dung Eater Puppet just because it took me three playthroughs to finally get him. Um, but something that I like to use on Saruman is the Great Shield Soldier Ashes. As a sorcery character, one of our weaknesses is that we have a long wind up on our attacks. Um, we leave ourselves open while we're attacking and we tend to not do well when enemies get in close to us. So the Great Shield Soldiers, they just are a bunch. There's a bunch of them. There's like five, five Great Shield Soldiers, and they have uh, Great Shields, and they just hold them out in front of them. Um, they're tanks. They take the aggro off of you. They're really great summons. I use them a lot. But Saruman has the uh, gift of voice, so I will say really just about any creature in here would be uh, something part of his repertoire that he could entreat to uh, to serve him. So whatever you personally enjoy, that's just one of my personal favorites. Now, besides the great soldiers, uh, a couple others that I really do like, of course, the Mimic Tear. Um, it's useful in certain situations for sure. Black Knife Tish is really great for a couple bosses. Um, let's see. Red Mane's okay. But if I can afford it, I do actually like Lantana. 
The only problem is Latena does not move, whereas Red Main Knight does. But Latena's ranged attacks are no joke. She hits like a truck. I actually don't mind uh, the Ancient Dragon Knight. Um, and Ludal the Headless, I actually like both of those as well. Battle Mage is okay if you're trying to get uh, sorceries off. A lot of these um, I haven't messed with, to be perfectly honest. But um, the puppets, I have been told, can be very nice. The Night Maiden and Swordstress are kind of nice. You get two, two summons. And um, as you upgrade them, they do get a little bit more health, which helps them out a lot because they are a little squishy. So we're going to move on here, guys. So as far as my spells go, I have Comet, Clintstone Pebble, Comet Azure. I'm rocking Flame Grant Me Strength, Golden Val, Frenzy Burst, and Unendurable Frenzy. Right now I have my Flask currently even, 7 and 7. Uh, the only reason for that is because I'm going to go a little heavier on my sword in this area. Um, a lot of these guys are very resistant to sorceries. That said, though, it's not really a problem for my incantations, but I do find myself using the sword a lot in many areas. Another thing that's really cool about Saruman, um, his gift of voice allows him to, you know, basically persuade enemies or intimidate enemies into serving him. The Bewitching Branch is part of my build. We're going to try to show that off in a couple areas if we can get it off. But let's move into it. I just love this area. Like, this is so Bloodborne. I absolutely love this area. All right, so immediately we're already faced with two mages at the front steps. This is meant to overwhelm you as they spell spam on you. But what we're going to do is we're going to buff up with Flame Grant Me Strength, and we're going to spell snipe. Yeah, there we go. We were able to kill them in one charged hit. It's going to be some more enemies up ahead, I believe. Yeah. Right? Oh, might miss this. Okay. You can see just how useful Frenzied Burst is. Now, it does have a long windup, so I do prefer to use my sorceries whenever I'm in closer range. And I can always rely on my sword, which does. Pretty nice damage at plus 10. Now, these zombies are weak to fire. Little bugger. tricky with the fire spell on the sword so at different elevations it's hard to tell what it's actually gonna hit and what it's not How that missed. That's what I mean. Okay, we're gonna pop up with flame graphic strength again. And actually, these guys are below us. This spell is really great. This incantation is really great if you can get above the enemies. Unendurable frenzy. 
in general it's a fantastic incantation but it's really great if you can get on top of the enemies there's a zombie back here i remember that yeah these guys are pretty magic resistant i thought so Let's tank up. And we're going to sneak up on this guy and use ooh, another one there. Use a blicking branch here. Reason for that? There's some dogs up ahead. All right. The, uh, you can hurt your ally that you bewitch. They can hurt you only basically if they're in the middle of an attack animation. But even if you hit them, you do not lose them as an ally. For three minutes, they're your thrall. They don't necessarily follow you, but if there's a line of enemies around you, they'll basically just keep moving to the enemies. There are definitely situations where it can be really nice to bewitch, bewitch some enemies. Um, for example, when you fight, you fight Commander Nile. He has two knights with him that fight you during that boss fight, and um, you can more or less turn his allies against him. It, it actually makes the fight a little bit easier. Now we don't use it a lot in this area just because these enemies are mages, but the RB attack, a mini Comet Azur essentially, is really nice. Not only does it do a quick, heavy burst of damage, but it does a lot of poise and often throws the enemies backwards. Even heavy knights, it can do it too. Here's a gravity enemy up there. Head, if I recall, if I see him back there. Started a little early on that. Oh. Alright, very nice, very nice. Flask up way back to the top. Now, as you can see, our madness is going up a little bit. Um, really, it's not that bad at all. The only time I find that you really need to recover from madness buildup tends to be during boss fights, prolonged boss fights. And that is why I do have some boluses equipped. Uh, it looks like I've actually used them all, but they're not particularly difficult to craft. The, the main thing that does make them a little trickier is the eye of yellow. Um, you can find quite a few yellows even early on at the beginning of the game down the Weeping Peninsula. And later on, much later on in your playthrough, these are farmable. Uh, like I said, it's not like you're going to need them all the time, but if in a particular gauntlet of enemies you're using Unendurable Frenzy, you know, two or three times back to back, you're probably getting close to having your Madness Bar all the way up, and you're going to want to pop one of these guys. Nice. Okay, next checkpoint. I think we go through a gauntlet of sorcerers here. Buff up first some defense. I'm gonna put my shield on.
Okay. Well, there's more up ahead. Yep. So we can actually do this area pretty easily if we buff up. Now we've got both Golden Val and Flame Grant Me Strength. Do a full charge on these guys. There's that in jar there, but there's some more mages. Oh, golden vow must have ended, or my flame grant strength must have ended. Quite a few more enemies up here, if I remember. some secret areas here. Now, I've already run through this area. I haven't beaten the end boss, but there would have been um, a boss here. The Red Wolf of Radagon. Remember, there's yes, there's an Iron Maiden over this way. Up up here again. Play your string. Just off by a split second there. All right, this area is kind of tricky. So we have two mages up there. We have an enemy over on the left, and there's a whole bunch of more enemies right in front of us. This area can be kind of hard to deal with, but with this build, this area is actually not hard at all. Snipe those guys. Perfect. Move forward. Pull up the small enemies. Item back here. Now, because I'm all the way through on my new game plus, my stats are all over the place. I'm using this character as um, a character creator, basically, to play all kinds of different builds. 
but my mind is at 50 and it has stayed at 50 since the end of my first game my first playthrough um that's why i'm able to spam so many abilities back to back um at this point in the game um you probably would have your mind somewhere ideally around like 20 25 um you're still fine i mean i have a lot of extra flasks and even at this point you could have at least half the blast I have now. Ah, I knocked me out of it. Little bugger. Let's head to the rooftops. ridiculous range on this incantation it's by far one of the best incantations um for any any faith-based build i strongly recommend frenzy burst it is equally as good possibly even better than loretta's bow for sorceries let me just look at that range it's awesome And the FP cost is not that bad at all. The infamous little jump here. Glad I didn't get stuck in its uh, attack. Those things are a piece of work, I'll tell you what. Look how easy we're making these rooftops with this particular incantation. It's just a really nice all around spell. Ooh, almost fell there. Okay, on our way to the top of the tower here. Full moon crossbow, awesome. There's a rooftop we can jump to. Here it is. Where we jumped earlier.
Alrighty, let's see here. Get down. I think we're near the beginning again. Waiting for the enemy. I swore there was something in this room. <laughs> How do we get back? I'm trying to remember. Might be easier just to teleport back. Actually, I think I needed to go to the debate parlor. We'll see. Yeah, I did. All right, we're gonna run to Renala now. I do want to show off this bewitching branch real quick, though. I found too many situations yet where it would have been useful, but here's the one over here. Oh, we didn't open the door. Dang. Oh, I'm locked on up there. All right. I apologize, guys. My depth perception is nowhere where it used to be. I had some health conditions. It makes it difficult for me to see clearly at times. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to jump down here. I'm going to turn this guy into my ally. There we go. Now for three minutes, this guy is on my side. Now, I can hurt him. He can hurt me. Like if I got in front of his attack animations. However, um, he will not react to me if I attack him. There's going to be some situations where there's going to be large groups of enemies and it can offer a very nice distraction uh, whenever you bewitch them. There's also some boss fights that are very useful for this as well. Um, the one up here at Castle Soul. I'm trying to remember his name. Not Commander Nile. It's Commander... I can't remember it, but... This particular boss fight, he has two uh, knights that fight with him. And if you bewitch them, they'll fight against the boss with you, which can make it a real a lot easier. Uh, you can still summon your spirit ash as well, making that fight even a little bit easier for you. We're running up to Renala now. Must have already killed this knight up ahead because I don't see him. Okay, so Renala is a two-phase boss fight. Take a look here and figure out. Let's get a game plan going. Um, I don't see any need to bewitch in this. Spirit summons, I'm actually going to switch this out. I personally really like 
the great shield soldier ashes i'll keep that for phase two uh phase one i'm probably gonna be relying on my uh, sword mostly i'm gonna buff up just to get a little extra defense though glintstone pebble just in case Phase two. Phase one's pretty easy if you know what you're doing, but a little tricky if you don't know what scholars are trying to look for. Ah, oh, my beloved. Have no fear. I will hold thee. Ye will be countless born forever and ever. Upon my name is Rani the Witch. Mother's rich slumber shall not be disturbed by thee. Queen of Caria, Renala of the Full Moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. Very nice. Okay, let's get our smash out. And on this. Alright, we're gonna buff up. think the mad sorcerer is actually quite a powerful build as you can see there's a lot of options under your repertoire you can have a lot of fun with him and on top of it um being a master of magic you can equip pretty much any spell and that would make sense for this build because as i mentioned saruman is a master of all forms of magic so it really just kind of opens up the book for you on what you can do with him i think that the sky is really the limit for whatever your particular play style is there's a lot of options 
Where did he I hope you guys enjoyed this. I um, hope to be Wednesday doing this again night. for you guys soon uh, yeah, with more build videos and more gameplay showing again, off the character. Um, if you have any questions, now. be sure to uh, be message me here stars. either on Twitch or YouTube Do with a comment or a direct message. And I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thank you all. I hope you have a good one. Have a great weekend. wave from my mouth. But you there. know what they say, Vegeta. When you fall off that horse, you get right back up and you eat that horse. Come eat that horse with me, Vegeta. What the heck? You ruined it, and I'm leaving. <laughs>